Last week, I played through Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door under a rule set that I like to call a move lock. It's basically a one-time use challenge where I'm only allowed to use every attack, item, and special move a single time for the entire duration of the game. If you haven't watched the full game video yet, then you should definitely do that first because it establishes the rule set and general strategy I figured out to play around the restrictions. Alright, now that we're all caught up together, let's look at the Pit of 100 Trials. Obviously, I used every single move in the game last time, so I can't beat the Pit of 100 Trials if we're purely continuing off of that. So what I decided to do was reset all of my move usages in order to attempt the pit. There are a total of 91 floors with fights on them, assuming you don't roll movers of course, and a total of less than that moves in the game. There were a lot of different interesting suggestions for how to make this challenge less super guard reliant, but I don't really want to change the rules mid challenge like that, so we're going to proceed with the same super guarding rules as last time. I'm allowed to super guard as much as I want, and I'm going to need to do it quite a lot in order to make up for the lack of moves. For this reason though, I decided that I would allow the use of any movers that spawned in the pit. This way, I'm skipping mostly fights that are going to be all super guarding, which makes things a little less repetitive for me to play and for you to watch. Something that does make the pit interesting though is that there are several enemies throughout it that are either straight up impossible to super guard to death, or so impractical and difficult that they're basically impossible anyways. So I have to not only save moves to use against them, but also pick and choose which ones are most efficient to get the most kills per move. The main rule I added since last time is that I added in some new things that count as moves for me to use. A lot of people in the comments suggested that each unique type of first strike that you can perform should count as a move. This includes jump, spin jump, spring jump, hammer, ultra hammer, shell toss, and bobbery bomb. And honestly, after hearing that suggestion, I really thought that I should have done it in the full game run, so I decided to add it in here. Spoiler alert, this helped tremendously. The only other rule worth mentioning that I added for the pit this time is that I would not be using any power rushes or mega rushes beyond the ones that are obtainable normally within the game. This means that the 70 plus power rushes I got from the Pianta Parlor last time are illegal and really violent. If I use any power rushes from the Pianta Parlor, I will go to jail and I will have to eat broccoli and other vegetables for my whole life. This rule ended up being slightly convenient for the prep work I had to put in for this pit attempt. I had basically no money left from running away from enemies and buying badges in the last playthrough, and I needed to rebuy a bunch of badges that I had sold since I had already used up the moves. So I made a deal with the devil and traded all of my power rushes to get my legal badges back. And by the devil, I mean this guy. The other major prep I had to do was fill out my inventory. I mostly wanted to bring items that attacked groups of enemies, as these all pierce defense and will generally give me way more bang for my buck with my limited item slots. I won't have the strange sack until floor 50 of the pit, and I'm definitely not going to leave and re-enter the pit, so I have 10 slots to work with. I decided to bring a Fire Flower, an Earthquake, a Thunder Rage, a Shooting Star, a Zest Dynamite, a Fright Mask, an Ice Storm, a Power Punch, and an Ultra Shroom. I decided to leave an open slot in my inventory so I could pick up and use whatever random items I might scrounge up during the pit run. I decided to leave Mario at 5 max HP going in and just planned to level it up as soon as the XP started rolling in, and I didn't rank up my partners any more than you saw in the last video. I had an HP plus to use so I was at least able to start with the base 10 health. And something you can do if you haven't already though is rank yourself up from a viewer to a subscriber. That was like a 4 out of 10 segue, so if that doesn't sell you on joining the Bringle dream, I don't really know what will. In all seriousness though, if you enjoy these videos, then make sure to subscribe. The huge amounts of support on this channel so far this year has been incredibly motivating and helped me push to keep making videos even while college has been very busy. And so, let's begin. Instead of summarizing each set of 10 floors, I think this time it's important to go floor by floor to show which combination of enemies I rolled and what solutions I decided to use to beat them. It would be pretty unintuitive to gloss over battles when each one has a direct effect on what I can do in the next one. Don't worry though, I will try my best to keep the repetitive parts brief. So, here goes. Right off the bat, I threw on all the defensive badges I had, including a Defend Plus, a P Down D Up for each of my characters, as well as some Last Stands. The plan was of course to super guard as many things to death as possible, especially early on in the pit when enemies have low attack and health. Floor 1 had a single Gloomba, which is no problem, and then Floor 2 had 5 Spinias, which takes a second to get through, but is completely risk-free since they don't do any damage even if I miss my super guards. 
Floor 3 has a couple Spanias and Fuzzies, which are also pretty easy. The fuzzy timing can be kind of hard, but let's just say that I got a little bit of practice with it last time. <sighs> Floor 4 is the first floor that I can't super guard since it has a dull bones which only attacks by throwing bones and therefore can't be killed with super guards. It does feel like a waste, but I had to do it, so I used a fire flower to kill him and his spinia friends. Floor 5 also had a couple dull bones, so I opted to use power shell with coops to take them out. 6 had a gloomba and a spinia, which are pretty easy pickings, and then 7 was another 5 pack of spinias. And finally, on floor 8, I encountered my first mover and did not hesitate for even a moment to immediately jump down 5 floors. I missed out on Sleepy Stomp in the chest on floor 10, but I already have a copy of Sleepy Stomp from the bad shop, so who really cares? Floor 13 had two Pokies and two Piters, which if you recall chapter 2 from the last video, I can't super guard Piters for any damage since they just fling their little spitballs at me from a safe distance. This means I have to use a move, so I picked Earth Tremor to take out everything. Floor 14 had a Dark Puff and a Paragloomba, which are both reasonable to kill with Super Guards, but the Dark Puffs can be pretty annoying when they choose to spam their charged up Thunder attack instead of the melee attack. Floor 15 had a Piter on it again, so I decided to check off my first Mario attack. Ultra Hammer. I'm honestly not sure why I picked Ultra Hammer instead of the Super Hammer or the regular one, but it doesn't really matter too much. From there, picking off the Paragloomba with Super Guards is of course tedious, but easy. Floor 16 hits me with a Paragloomba and a couple Pokies, which is another Super Guard spamming affair, but I figured I'd talk about it a little bit since Super Guarding Pokies to death is actually pretty fun. They're decently hard to time, especially when they choose to throw their body segments at the character in the back. There's really no easy way to tell which character they're trying to hit until it actually hits them, so so I pretty much just have to time the button for the front character and hope that's the one they're targeting. And of course, super guarding this body throw attack deals 3 damage back to them instead of 1, which is what makes super guarding these guys rewarding and fun. 17 has a couple clefts and a paragloomba which is easy to super guard, and unfortunately on 18 I got the only one out of 3 possible combos of enemies that has piters in it. I decided to use a thunder rage so I could kill everything in one move. And finally, 19 has 3 Dark Puffs, which are exactly as annoying as you would expect because I already talked about how annoying they were. Floor 20 gives us Fire Drive, which actually isn't significant because you already can access it by buying it from the bad shop after completing Chapter 5. And now, Floor 21 already complicates things a bit. These enemies can do pretty decent damage, but are technically possible to kill with Super Guards only. The problem is that Boos especially are incredibly annoying to kill this way because they love to turn themselves or their buddies invisible. The invisibility doesn't stop you from Super Guarding them, but it wastes turns and makes the process even more tedious. For this fight, I decided to use my first optional item, and it was my beloved Zest Dynamite since it's able to deal 7 damage to each of them for an exact kill. Floor 22 has another complicated enemy for this challenge in the form of this little bandit man. They're tough to super guard, and if they steal a coin and run away from you in the pit, the fight won't end and you have to refight them until you properly defeat every enemy. For this reason, I decided to use Super Hammer to kill the bandit, and then I finished the spiky Gloomba with Super Guards. Again, I'm not really sure why I used Super Hammer instead of the regular one, but I just did, okay? We're apparently on a losing streak or something here because Floor 23 spawned with 4 Lakitus, which are another enemy that don't have any contact attacks that you can deal damage with Super Guards against. I decided to run away, change my badges up, and hop back in and kill them with a multi bounce. Floor 24 had one of these guys spawn holding a stopwatch, which is well known to be an absolute pain in the ass in this game. When enemies use stopwatches against you, they have a 100% chance to immobilize you for 3 turns. And since I was still pretty early in the pit, I opted to just let them use it and suffer the consequences so I didn't have to use any moves to kill this fight. Goombella took a fair amount of damage, but Mario's defense is especially high so he barely took any. And then I got a second lucky break because Floor 25 spawned with another mover allowing me to zoom down to 30 and grab Zaptap. Zaptap is going to be very, very important in a little bit, and I'm sure anybody familiar with challenge runs of this game knows exactly why. I decided to put it on immediately though because it can help grab extra damage if I happen to miss super guards. Not that that's a thing that I would ever let happen, just for the record. We can actually gloss over floors 31 to 39 pretty effectively because they all had the exact same solution. If you take a look at all the enemies that appear during this leg of the pit journey, you'll notice that these are all enemies that can be super guarded to death, and pretty easily 
too. There's just a couple types of Koopas, some Clefts, Parabuzzies, and Flower Fuzzies. The Flower Fuzzies can be totally foiled by Zaptap, which isn't a massive advantage, but it does help stop them from stealing my FP if somehow I'm having an off moment and miss the Super Guard, which, once again, I would never do. So yeah, this section was just a ton of very tedious B-button 3-frame window spamming action. It took me like 20 minutes to get through these 9 floors, which is absolutely ridiculous, but just remember, I do it for you guys, I do it for the content. Since floor 40 doesn't give you a reward and instead just gives you a random fill inventory item, we'll go ahead and move on to floor 41. I finally got to use a strategy for killing these guys that both didn't completely rely on super guards, but also didn't consume any moves, and it all centers around this guy, the Big bob Yeah, I mean, he's, he's sitting there. But after a few turns of just sitting there, he can explode and deal huge damage, not just to me, but also to his brothers in arms. His attack can't be super guarded, but it doesn't pierce defense, so I take 5 and 6 damage from it, while both the dark paratroopas take 6. Coupling that with the super guards I already hit on them, it's more than enough to kill them. Honestly, it's really fun and so satisfying to use this guy's damage to my advantage. Floor 42 had a bulky bob a poison pokey, and a spiky parabuzzy. As much as I'd love to use the bulky bob damage for my benefit again, Mario doesn't really have enough health left after the last one to make it worth it. So, I killed the bulky bob with my normal hammer finally and super guarded the other two. 43 is another instance of enemies that are technically possible to kill with super guards, but it's just so impractical and difficult. Lava bubbles have three attacks and only one of them can deal damage back with a super guard. On top of that, that attack is probably within the top 10 hardest attacks to super guard in the whole game. So I used a shooting star to pick off the lava bubbles and then dealt with the dark paratroopa with a couple B presses. Floor 44 had a 4 pack of poison pokies which again are pretty fun to super guard to death because they lose half their health to a blocked body throw attack. The poison status they inflict sometimes when you miss though can be annoying and I had to shuffle partners around to avoid unnecessary extra poison damage. 45 had some more lava bubbles and this time I decided to use an ice storm to help get the job done. Since the lava bubbles are weak to ice, they take 4 from the item and the freeze is able to do an additional 1 once he thaws out. That leaves me to super guard the first lava bubble once and the second one twice. Since Mario had such low health, I decided to play it safe and use my one and only sweet treat to heal back up a bit. I took quite a bit of damage even after that because of these stupid ass timings, but I got the job done. Floor 46 had 4 dark paratroopas with one of them holding an HP plus giving him an obnoxious 13 health. I contemplated using Gale Force, but felt like it would be more useful later, so instead I finally popped that Fright Mask I brought with me. I was really hoping it would scare away the 13 health Juggernaut, but it just scared away two of the Virgin 8 health Paratroopas instead. Oh well though, the solution remains the same. 47 had a couple bulky bob bombs, and once again I did not have the health to tank their explosions, so I used Quake Hammer instead. With a bunch of attack increase badges, it's able to deal 6 and 1 hit kill both of them. 48 brought more lava bubbles to the table, and I dealt with them using an ice power tornado jump plus a shell toss from Koops. 49 once again served up 4 poison pokies, but luckily I had just leveled up so I had lots of health to tank hits if I missed any super guards. And so that brings us to floor 50. I did get the strange sack here, but since I've already used so many items, there's absolutely a 0% chance I'm going to use any of the extra slots this gives me. So on to the second half of the pit. Things get way harder from here. There are many fights that are either impossible to super guard to death or insanely impractical like I mentioned in the beginning. I did luck out once again though and a mover spawned on floor 51, allowing me to go straight to floor 56. And badge bandits are a perfect example of one of those impractical enemies. They have 12 health and have the exact same stealing and refighting problem that the regular bandits have. If I had more defense badges, spamming normal guards with zap tap would have been a viable solution, but I just wasn't that prepared so I was gonna have to use some attacks to get through these guys. I hit the front badge bandit with a buffed up EP stomp and then I actually did manage to block the attack from the other one. I took out the second badge bandit with a shrink stomp and then killed the ice puff with a body slam from flurry. Ice puffs would be totally fine to super guard to death if not for their charged up ice attack. If I get frozen even once, he's going to do so much damage to me that it's not even funny. 57 had another ice puff as well as a moon cleft. I went ahead and bopped the ice puff with a hammer throw and then super guarded the moon cleft from 6 to 0, no problem at all. 
Floor 58 had four dark boos, which have a similar problem to the regular boos from earlier. They're decently hard to super guard, and they love to waste turns by turning invisible. I started the fight, grabbed a tattle on them, and then immediately realized that super guarding them for the kills was stupid. I ran away, swapped to flurry, and then blew all of them away with a gale force. 59 had two red chomps and one dark boo. The red chomps are really no problem to super guard, and one dark boo in isolation isn't too bad either, so that's how I beat this fight. Floor 60 double dip isn't useful to me at all for this challenge, so uh, yeah, let's just move on. The three dark Lakitu's on floor 61 are a pretty big issue because they're just like the regular Lakitu's in the sense that you can't damage them with super guards. They each have 13 health, so I decided to use a supernova to kill all of them. Floor 62 spawned with a dry bones and two frost piranhas. As I showed in the full game run when I was grinding for star points, killing frost piranhas with only super guards is easy enough, but the dry bones is another enemy that can't be damaged with super guards. The strategy I had to use to kill the dry bones put Mario's life on the line, but I didn't have much of a better choice. I used an earthquake item to hit everything for 5, and then I used bomb with Bobri to properly kill the dry bones instead of knocking him down. I crucially hit both the super guards with Mario, and then I was able to put him in the back slot for safety and finish the fight. Luckily, I grabbed a level up here again, which is nice because Mario was kind of on his last legs. Floor 63 was another annoyingly complicated one. It had two dark wizards as well as a dark craw. Any varieties of wizard are probably the hardest enemy in the game to kill with super guards, excluding the ones that are actually impossible, of course. I put together a pretty fun strategy for this one, though. I used shell slam with coops for the defense piercing, and it dealt nine to every enemy. And that leaves the wizards with just one health each. I then put Mario in the front slot and hoped for the wizards to use their tickle attacks. I actually lucked out pretty good, and both of them did it reasonably quickly, and this is a another brutally hard attack to super guard, which is exactly why I equipped Zap Tap. Even though I messed up the timing both times, they each still took one damage from Zap Tap and then went down. From there, all I had to do was the tedious, bitter work of super guarding Dark Craw to death. On floor 64, I hit yet another lucky break, mover number 4. This let me go straight to the funny floor, bypassing more encounters with Dark Lakitu's, Dark Wizards, and Dark Craws, all of which are pretty awful to deal with in this challenge. The funny floor just had a Frost Piranha and a Dark Craw. I superguarded the Frost Piranha from Alive and Well to Dead and Buried, and then I used a Power Smash to speed up the process on the Dark Craw. Floor 70 rewards you with Double Tip P- Double Tip P? Whoa, <laughs> that's loaded. Floor 70 rewards you with Double Dip P, which is once again pretty pointless under these conditions. On Floor 71, I cooked up another strategy that I think is super cool. I put on every attack increase I had for my partners and then sent in Vivian to use Fiery Jinx. This deals 8 damage to each wizard and sets them on fire for 2 turns. I then used Clock Out with Mario to immobilize all of them for 3 turns. This way they were completely frozen in place while their last couple health burned away and I went totally unharmed. Floor 72 had a Dark Coup Patrol and 2 Chain Chomps. Dark Coup Patrols have way too much health, like seriously, 25 is absolutely unhinged. I decided to use my normal jump with Spike Shield to take over half of his health and then committed to finishing the rest of the fight with Super Guards. Fun fact, at least for me, the Dark Koopa Patrol's Super Guard timings are way harder when he's in the front slot of the battle like this. You have to anticipate his attack way more than just reacting to it, which makes it a lot easier to take damage from him. I popped an Ultra Shroom with Mario to help him survive and went to work spamming B against him. He absolutely shredded through that health as well as pretty much all of Vivian's, but I reached another level up after, so it didn't matter. On floor 73, I rolled 5 Phantom Embers, which is actually probably the best combo I could have rolled. Bobbery already had 5 health, so I slapped on a bunch of attack increasing badges and deleted all 5 of them with a Bobombist. Floor 74 was another one where I rolled the optimal combo, which was 4 Swoopulas. Against these guys, I'm able to let them kill off Goombella, who already had low health, and then they're completely useless against Mario with Zap Tap on. All I have to do is let them try to attack me over and over, and they literally can't do anything and wither themselves away. Floor 75 gave me 2 Chain Chomps and a Wizard. I took out the Wizard with a Spin Jump and then got to work super guarding the Chain Chomps. I also took this opportunity to set Yoshi to 1 health so I can take advantage of Mega Rush P with him later. They did take down Bobbery, but after finishing them with more Super Guards from Mario, I leveled up and brought him back to 40 health. 
76 was the same battle as the last one, but flipped around and I killed the wizard with a head bonk before super guarding the chain chomps once again. 77 had another pair of chain chomps, but this time they had a dark coup patrol as their shepherd. I dealt with him super well by using a beefed up power jump as well as a bomb squad targeted at him. From there, I just repeated exactly what I did to the chain chomps on the last couple floors. Floor 78 was a squadron of three phantom embers as well as a wizard, and I decided this would finally be the time that I would pop showstopper. I was really hoping I could pick off at least a couple of them, but I actually managed to kill all four enemies in one go, making this a super worthwhile showstopper. It's a 90% chance against each phantom ember, so that part isn't surprising, but it's only a 40% chance against the wizard, so this was definitely some pretty solid luck. Floor 79 was once again a team of four swoopulas, so I just had to channel my inner Luigi and win by doing absolutely nothing. As always, the bump attack badge is the reward on floor 80, and it does nothing in the Pit of 100 trials, so yeah, there you go. Now, most of the 80s floors are both a blessing and a curse for this challenge. All enemies here except for the Arantulas can be super guarded to death and have pretty easy timings, but the Piranha Plants in particular have a ton of health and all of these guys punish you pretty heavily for any missed super guards. Still though, I had already chewed through a ton of my available moves, so I needed to take advantage of every super guardable enemy that I could. 81 was fine, but 82 spawned with three Arantulas on it. I decided to use Peril Stampede with Yoshi to obliterate everything. On 83, I finally decided to start putting first strikes to use. I killed the front Arantula with a normal jump first strike, and then I killed the back one with a spring jump attack. 15 super guards later, the piranha plant died as well. Floor 84 had a piranha plant and three spunias, floor 85 had only three spunias, floor 86 had four spunias, and floor 87 had two dark bristles and one spunia. I was able to deal with all of these using purely super guards. It took a good long while of course, but my success rate was super good and I managed to get through it without losing too much health. By the way, these battles are all made much easier by the fact that these enemies can only target the front character, meaning that I'm able to control which character has to tank damage from missed super guards. For floor 88, I had to deal with two more Arantulas, so I used the spin jump first strike and then a peril lip lock with flurry which dealt perfect damage and healed flurry way back up. After that, it was just more B button spam to kill the dark bristle. Floor 89 gave me four piranha plants in arms. They do not have arms. Which requires 60 super guards to chew through. I missed enough of them that Flurry went down, but then Mario only took one hit before finishing them off the rest of the way. And now, before we head into the final 10 floors, let's just take a second to recap exactly what moves I have left. In terms of first strikes, I still have Hammer, Ultra Hammer, Spring Jump, Bomb, and Shell Toss. And then for the rest of the normal moves, I have Fire Drive, Head Rattle, Piercing Blow, Ice Smash, Power Bounce, Love Slap, Ground Pound, Gulp, Mini Egg, Shade Fist, and Multi Bonk. And then I have just three special attacks left, which are Art Attack, Power Lift, and Sweet Feast. And let me just remind you that using this handful of attacks, I had to not only get through the nine floors of ridiculously strong enemies, but I also had to shred through 200 of Bone Tail's health. And also worth noting is that this was actually my second attempt that made it to the 90s, and on the first one, I ran out of moves before I was able to make it to the end. So with all that in mind, here we go. Floor 91 spawned with two elite wizards and a swampire. Against these guys, I was able to use a hammer first strike, a fire drive, and a love slap with Miss Mouse in order to kill both of the elite wizards. After that, the swampire is completely unable to damage Mario because of Zap Tap. The solution I figured out for Floor 92 was another one of my absolute favorites from this challenge. I encountered three Poison Puffs as well as a Bobulk, who I'm going to make use of just like I did with the Bulky bob -omb earlier. This meant I would have to survive five turns until the Bobulk actually exploded though, which can be pretty tough since Poison Puffs do tremendous damage, and it's pretty hard to time the Super Guard for their charged up Poison Cloud attack. I decided to use a random Sleepy Sheep I obtained earlier in the pit, and I actually managed to get the sleep on all three Poison Puffs, but not the Bobulk, which is the optimum outcome. I didn't think much of it while playing the game, but I'm checking now while writing this script, and apparently it was a 65% chance against all three puffs individually, but only a 30% chance for it to not happen to the Bobulk. Apparently, I was super lucky and had literally no idea. After all the poison puffs were put to sleep, I was able to just spam defend and let the Bobulk blow up. He deals 16 damage to everything on screen, which makes for a perfect kill on the puffs. 
for floor 93, I found a similar solution to the last one, except this one happened to be damageless. I was really hoping to encounter four bobulks, which is of course one of three possible combinations, but instead I got three bobulks and an amazing daisy. Luckily though, the daisy ran away as they're prone to doing, so I just let the bobulks light their fuses and buff themselves up. And then all I had to do was use Veil with Vivian on the turn before they blew up and then completely avoid them exploding. I was super excited to finally find a practical use for Veil in this challenge, and it wasn't just one where I avoided damage, but in a way it worked as its own offense. Floor 94 was the easiest out of all of these so far. I ran into 5 Swampires, which is super easy to completely destroy with Zap Tap. I let my partner go down and then they're all just forced to target Mario and shock themselves to death. For floor 95, I rolled two elite wizards and a swampire. I solved it by using a peril gulp with Yoshi in order to kill the front wizard and damage the second one, and then I could use piercing blow to pierce and blow him to death. Yeah, now that I think about it, this badge's name is kind of unfortunate if you have the sense of humor of a 14 year old. After that, obviously the swampire is once again totally walled by zap tap. For floor 96, I ran into three poison puffs and a bobble again, and this time not only was I not able to use a sleepy sheep, but I also had a lot less health going into the fight. I decided to try using infatuate with Vivian to confuse the puffs and hopefully stall them for a bit, but this move absolutely sucks mega dick and only confused one puff. He was confused for three turns, but on all three of those turns he just attacked me normally anyways. This move costs a lot of FP, has a low chance to work on a lot of enemies, and even when it does work, there's still a chance that it does nothing. Awesome. There's a reason that this is the first time I've ever mentioned this move in any video on this channel so far. So I was left to super guard the best I could, and on the turn before the bob bulk exploded, I finally used Sweet Feast to heal back up so I could tank his hit. Just like last time, he completely deleted the poison puffs along with himself. On floor 97, I ended up pulling some Giga Brain. I started off with a bomb first strike from Bobbery, lighting off both bob bulks and dealing 10 damage to Mario, knocking him down to exactly 5 health. Then, with every attack increase I have, including Power Rush, I was able to Ice Smash the Elite Wizard for 7 damage, freezing him. I then swapped over to Vivian, who was also already in danger. I hit the Wizard with a Shade Fist, which was a little shocky thanks to the stage, but did 4 damage that killed him when coupled with the damage from him unfreezing. Floor 98 was another super simple one since I rolled 5 Swampires again. I totally walled them with Zap Tap, and just like the last time, it took forever, but was so worth it. And finally, on floor 99, I got two elite wizards and a swampire. Fortunately, I still had an art attack in the tank, and I was able to use it to kill the elite wizards and knock the swampire down to, like, no health. After that, I zap tap walled the final normal enemy of the Pit of 100 Trials. And so, that brings us to Bone Tail. The question of the day is, did I save enough moves to be able to beat him? I had both Yoshi and Goombella set to peril, and I equipped all the attack increases that I could muster to take advantage of that setup. I also finally made use of Quick Change, which I had gotten from Dazzle at some point in this playthrough, I don't really remember when. So, let's see if I did it. I started by burning the first turn, tattling Bone Tail so we can see his health bar. I didn't have room in my badge loadout for Peekaboo, so this is just a concession we're gonna have to make. On the second turn, I popped my final special move I had left. Power Lift, and I used it to buff Mario and Goombella with 3 extra attack. After that, I swapped Goombella out to keep her safe and moved on to the next turn. I brought Goombella back out, gave her a power punch, and then tucked her back away. I used Power Bounce with Mario after all of this time and unfortunately dropped the inputs a little early when it literally mattered most. Womp womp. After that, I brought Yoshi out for a Peril Ground Pound, which did pretty good damage, but still a little bit less than I was expecting. After that, I finally unleashed Goombella's hugely buffed Multibonk, and it did a sh ton of damage, but unfortunately, that's the end of the road. That's it. That's all the attacks. Okay, well, I actually did forget about Mini Egg now that I'm looking back at this, but that would have only done 36 and still left Bone Tail with 42 health. So besides that, there weren't any other moves I had access to. This was it. So, in a beautiful parallel to the full game run, my route fell apart right at the very end and left me to end the video awkwardly with some rationalizing. I went ahead and finished Bone Tail here with a head bonk, spring jump, and stampede, which shows that if I had saved these three additional moves, I would have been totally fine and killed Bone Tail no problem. But honestly, there's an even simpler solution to this. All I had to do was not include the restriction where I wasn't allowed to use extra power rush badges from the Pianta parlor. I didn't even 
even run this as a rule in the full game run, so if I had just left well enough alone and let the challenge be challenging instead of making it even harder, killing Bonetail would have been completely free. And hell, even if I didn't use the extra power rushes anywhere else in the pit to save moves and just used it on Bonetail, my move routing still would have worked. So honestly, overall, I do consider that a victory. In our theoretical happy ending, I only broke my most arbitrary rule of all, so I'm willing to count this as an overall success. This pit run was literally over 5 hours, which is the longest of any pit of 100 trials run I've ever done, including prologue pit. You know, now that I think about it, I wonder if that has anything to do with winning half the fights with super guards. I can't quite put my finger on it. And keep in mind, that 5 hours of gameplay was also only for the successful attempt. That that doesn't even count the previous two. So it's safe to say that I was all pit of 100 trials out and willing to call this good for here. And so, even if that ending was slightly anticlimactic, I hope you guys had a fun time watching the video. I got to use a lot of really unique and unconventional strategies to win different battles, arguably even more than I did in the full game run, so that's always a W. As always, shoutouts to the Bringle member squad for going the extra mile to support the channel financially. If you want to get your name up here with these folks, as well as get early access to these new videos, then hit the funny little join button on the channel page. And aside from that, if you're an enjoyer of the Thousand Year Door content, then make sure you subscribe because I've been putting out challenge videos related to it weekly for a few months now and have no plans to stop. And on that note, I will see you guys next week. Take care.